Okay, my friends, so I want to revisit something I said in the last video real quick before we kind of take a deeper dive. I, I mentioned that a thousand milliliters is equal to one liter, which is, then that's exactly right. You take a thousand of these little tiny dudes here, put them together uh, in one quantity, and you end up with the, with the full liter. Then I said, saying that another way, that means one milliliter is one one thousandth of a liter. And I realized maybe we should slow that down a little bit and make sure that you know where that came from. What I did was I took the full thousand milliliters and broke this into a thousand parts. So how big would one one thousandth of this be? Well, it would be one of those little dudes. So effectively what I did was I divided this quantity into a thousand equal pieces. Now, the unit is still milliliters. I'm dividing a thousand by a thousand and I'm getting one. And nobody's going to disagree with why that's one. We'll come back to that in a second. Since this equation is true, if I divide this side by a thousand, I, could, oh, I should also divide this side by a thousand. So I get the unit being liters and I've got one one thousandth. This fraction is very rarely written as that fraction outside of math classrooms. It's either written as the decimal version, which is 0 0.001, or the uh, scientific notation, which is 10 to the negative third. I'm going to leave that one be, unless Teresa wants me to dive into it further in a later video, which I'll happily do. I'm going to use the decimals, because generally speaking, we, we tend to use the decimals a little bit more than scientific notation. Even though you're in a science class, you're in a bio class, but still, I, I'm going to stick with decimals for the, uh, for the most part here. Why .001? I just want to do a, a, a review. You know this already, but you may have, it may have slipped your mind in talking about this. Where did the decimal come from? Where did these zeros come from? Well, if you look at, I'm going to put it down here on the side here. If you look at one divided by a thousand, one has a decimal place. You don't write it because you simply write one. Although with sig figs, I'm sure you should have a decimal there and some maybe some zeros depending on how precise your instruments are. But that one has a decimal. It's right there. When you divide or multiply, or multiply, we'll get back to that in a little bit, by powers of 10, straight powers of 10, like a thousand, the metric system is so fabulous because all you've got to do is move the decimal point left or right. If you divide by powers of 10, you move it left, that's making the number smaller. And if you multiply by powers of 10, you move it right, that's making the numbers larger. We're dividing by powers of 10 here. Every time you divide by a power of 10, you move the decimal place one to the left. So since we have to divide by 1,000, we're going to start by dividing by 10, just 10. That takes this decimal and moves it one place to the right, which hopefully that shouldn't surprise anybody. One divided by 10 is 0.1 or one tenth. If you then divide by 10 again, you actually divided by 100. So that decimal point now has to move over again, and that zero is meaningful. That zero means we're even smaller than tenths now. We're in the hundredths place. So 0.01 is otherwise known as a hundredth. And if you're dividing by a thousand, you're going to move that place one more. Now, me personally, I like to put a little leading zero out there to make sure that my reader or whoever's checking my work knows there are no whole number parts out here. It's all fractional. And in this case, there are no tenths nor hundredth parts. It's all thousandths. One thousandth. One thousandth. One thousandth. And that also happened up here. It's just up here, the decimal was here. So when you divided by a thousand, you went one, two, three. Aha! The decimal is now here. You can do this with any power of ten, and this is why it's so fabulous that the metric system is based in powers of 10, not silly measures like ours, like four quarts in a gallon and 12 inches in a foot and 5,280 feet in a mile and all that stupid crap. Metric system's all based in powers of 10. Why it's really cool is we can also go even smaller than a milliliter. Let's take a look at that right now. Okay, so now we know that a milliliter is a thousandth of this. I'll try to take a milliliter sip. I think I got it. 
what if this is too big? You're in microbiology, right? Microbiology. If this is too big, that's where you get into the idea of a microliter. Not a milliliter, but a microliter. So what is that? By definition, it's what happens if you take a milliliter and divide a milliliter into a thousand pieces. If you divide a milliliter into a thousand pieces, we can do this a couple different ways. Let's do it with the old moving the decimal place. Here's a decimal. We're dividing it by a thousand. Move it over once, twice pick up a zero, thrice pick up a zero. It's going to be 0 0.001 milliliters. That's exactly what happened here. But in your field of study now, microbiology, that has another name. Besides one thousandth of a milliliter, it's called one microliter. One microliter. It uses the Greek letter mu uh, for micro. And I think that's pretty universal for micro. If you use, uh, if you ever Google microliter, you'll see the exponent 10 to the negative 6. Now, I mentioned before, 10 to the negative 3 is what this fraction is. 1 over 10,000 is 10 to the negative 3rd power. Where's 10 to the negative 6 come from? Well, remember when I divided this side by 1,000? If I divide this side by 1,000 and use that awesome bit of moving the decimal like we did before, watch what happens. It's already three spaces this way off of the one for a thousandth of a liter. If I divide it by a thousand again, it's got to move three more spaces, and you're going to end up with one millionth of a liter. Why 10 to the negative 6? Because if the decimal was originally here, one, two, three, four, five, six, six spaces left. That meant you divided by a million. What's a million? A million is a thousand thousand. That's why it's called a million, which is actually another cool little bit of trivia you don't need to know. But when you divide by a thousand and then divide by a thousand again like we just did, you've effectively divided by a million. So one microliter is equal to one millionth of a liter. Perhaps an easier way to think about that is that one liter is equal to a million microliters. But here's the deal. A liter is too big a quantity for you to deal with in microbiology. That's why it's called microbiology, right? What I'd like to look at now are a couple types of problems that you'll be able to see in micro and now deal with because you've kind of got this understanding of the relationship of milli and micro and then full liter as well, but mostly between milli and micro. Let's get into that next.